It's time for the Lego Movie Movie Reviews. Starting with the Lego Movie. Owie, I step on the film and it hurt. I saw God during this. This movie made me feel like I was on drugs and simultaneously tugged at my heartstrings too. The last time a movie ever did that to me, honest to God, was the freaking Spongebob Squarepants movie on first watch. This movie is rated G for all ages, but there's also nudity in the beginning of the film where Emmett has no clothes on. I never noticed how many references to Danish brand Lego there are in this movie. How can a film be so anti-capitalist and then be a giant Lego advertisement at the same time? I don't know what happens during half of this movie because my natural instinct is to tune out Chris Pratt's voice. A foolproof test for a movie. Does the film contain Lego Batman as voiced by Will Arnett? If yes, then the film is good. If not, it could be good or bad. Kind of a toss up at that point. If someone could just upload a supercut of Batman's 33 minutes of screen time to YouTube, it'd save me a lot of time in the future. Batman and Benny are so seductive. I'm sorry, like, you can't have Will Arnett and Charlie Day voice characters and not expect me to be seduced by them. Somehow, Alice and Brie manages to remain hot, even as a Lego figurine. Since the last time I watched this movie, I have built my own double-decker couch. Easily the best decision of my life. Emmett, you didn't let me finish earlier, because I died. If someone ever put a gun to my head and told me to quote the entirety of the Lego movie line by line verbatim, tell my mama I'll be home while dinner's still hot. Okay, unsurprisingly, I cried again at this, but also, while I was sitting there strategically covering half of my face in order to hide that a bunch of animated bricks had made me well up once again, I remembered somehow that one time in an interview, Gillian Anderson mentioned she also cried at the Lego movie, so I guess now I have to bear the burden of being super cool all the time. Lego Abraham Lincoln implies the existence of Lego racism, slavery, and Jim Crow laws. I'm convinced that Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles watched the Lego movie and were like, Wait! We could be Wild Styles like Wild Style in the Lego movie. Wild Style was my first love. Hyperfixating on this movie as a junior in high school is the best thing that ever happened to me because now I spend every class drawing Benny x Bad Cop fan art, plus I get to explain to people that Benny is canonically gay and has a boyfriend. I am truly living my best life. Lego movie? More like lay go watch this again and post endless Benny gifts everywhere and anywhere. I want to put Benny in a jar and shake it. When I wrote out my goals for this week, it did not include sobbing while watching the Lego movie at 9.34 on Saturday morning with no pants on. Honey, where are my pants? <laughs> Me, through tears during one of the most overwhelming weeks of my life. Everything is awesome! Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome! What we're living now to dream. This masterpiece's average score keeps going down while unfiltered garbage like the Lorax keeps going up. Be right back. I'ma commit toaster bath. I mean, yeah, it's fine, but it's no Madagascar escape to Africa. Not Shark Tail, but has laser sharks. Deserves 5 stars rating for that alone, in my opinion. Just kidding, hashtag not Shark Tail freaking sucks. I'm not supposed to prefer the rigidity and consistency of President Business's world, am I? Oh god, I'm the bad guy. The comedy is there. The upbeat fun is there. This used to easily be a 4 star movie. I even did this as a rare paid rental rewatch because I liked it so much. However, a few short years later, it's dropped a full star for me. I think I'm just evolving into a salty old curmudgeon. It's enjoyable, but once again I found myself wishing for the pace to be slowed down, like I have with other recently watched animation. Plus, I don't find Legos to be aesthetically pleasing. They don't come off as legitimate characters that I can invest myself in. They are blocky little toys, a fact I had a hard time letting go of as I looked at them. Especially during the action scenes, which are frequent. They look like clutter. I wonder if this means I'm going to be an irritable father. I'm literally only going to have a kid so that I have an excuse to buy hundreds of dollars of Lego sets. The Lego Movie 2. The second part.
The last thing I expected the Lego Movie 2 to be about was toxic masculinity. Okay, I don't give a freak what I'm about to say. Rex is so damn fine. This was clearly intended for children. I am not a child. I'm a sewer baby. I have a Lego brick tattoo. Even if this movie did have three seconds of Batman flossing, it's gonna take a lot for me not to really like these movies. I came across Karsten Runquist's review for the movie, and am I a boomer for thinking Batman flossing was him legitimately tooth flossing? Because that in and of itself sounds equally cursed. The Yassification of Legos. I really hope our grimdark post-apocalypse is successfully interrupted by Hyperlux Disco Femme Space Glitter Communism before it can reach its full implementation by libertarians so bro their concept of society such as it is can only include themselves alone. I would really be so cool with that. Heck, if we had to settle for Hyperlux Disco Femme Post-Apocalyptic Glitter Communism not in space, okay, sure. But where else will we put all the space temples? Plastic bricks did not make me cry. 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 Maya Rudolph gives the performance of a lifetime as a disgruntled mom who steps on not one, but two Legos. Truly a tour de force. The Academy isn't ready. Cannot wait for the incredibly dark third installment, which has no Lego, but instead features the breakdown of Maya Rudolph and Will Ferrell's marriage. Why is she still there? Her whole family is obsessed with Lego, unhealthily so. She's just living in a nightmare. That poor woman, like, imagine her life based on how much of a dick her husband is in the first film. Like, Jesus. Fun times though, big fan of the songs. Can I just say, the parents of the kids must be multi-trillionaires. How much Lego do they have? I had like one set as a kid and it wasn't even Lego. Heck, it wasn't even Mega Bloks. It was Walmart quality money. Where are they making this money? I bet they sell drugs and ass on the side of the street or there's some pyramid scheme going on. They had a Statue of Liberty Lego set. I can barely afford a yellow brick because it costs like $320. What if like in the third one, the kids are all grown up and they don't actually use their toys anymore? Like they have to go to college and stuff and the toys are sad, and then they- And that's Toy Story 3. This is little sister propaganda, and I love it. Me. I don't know, slapstick humor doesn't really do much for me. Also me. <laughs> look at the banana! <laughs> he slipped again, silly banana! Susan. I always wanted a toaster room. Let's be honest that Green Lantern and Superman are definitely a couple. Don't touch me when I speak something! I'm a Benny Stan first and human second. If you watch this at 3 a.m., you will have an out of body experience. All of these Lego movies feel like a hallucinogenic trip that has me reliving my childhood in an alarmingly self aware way, and honestly, I really dig it. This movie reminded me of when my little brother ran my Lego battery controlled passenger train down the stairs, and it broke so thoroughly that I lost some pieces and it could never be rebuilt. Special thank you to my Patreon members, my little ruse, Seltzer Fountain Man, and Kuski55. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate it. You're the best. And of course, thank you to everyone who suggested that I read the LEGO Movie Reviews. And thank you for watching, I was happy to have you here, and I hope you had a good time. Tell me in the comments, if there was a third LEGO Movie, what do you think it should be about? And most importantly, have a fantastic day, my friends.